tutorial looks at flowers and pollination. You need to be able to describe the structures of an insect pollinated and a wind pollinated flower and explain how each is adapted for pollination. Here is an image of an insect pollinated flower and a wind pollinated flower. During plant reproduction, pollen grains need to move from the anther to the stigma. This is called pollination. Insects can pollinate flowers and so can wind. Insect pollinated flowers are different in structure from wind pollinated flowers. In wind pollinated flowers, so those are flowers that distribute their pollen via the wind, the petals are small and dull. They're often green or brown colored as they don't need to attract insects. Similarly, the nectar isn't scented in any way as they don't need to attract insects. They produce large amounts of pollen to increase their chances of pollination. And the pollen grains tend to be smooth and light to be carried easily by the wind. The anthers that produce the pollen are loosely attached to long filaments outside of flowers to easily release pollen by the wind. The stigma is feathery and outside the flower to catch drifting pollen grains. In insect pollinated flowers, so those are flowers that distribute their pollen via insects, the petals are large and brightly coloured to attract the insect pollinators. The nectar is scented also to attract insect pollinators. They produce a moderate amount of pollen grains, but don't need to um, produce as many as wind pollinated flowers as insects are very effective pollinators. Pollen grains are sticky and spiky to attach to insects. Anthers that produce the pollen are stiff and firmly attached to filaments inside the flower to brush against insects. And the stigma is sticky and inside the flower to catch pollen when brushed against by insects. Finally, I'm just going to mention self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination is when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. In comparison, cross-pollination is when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of different flowers. So in self-pollination, you only need one parent plant, whereas in cross-pollination, you need two parent plants. An advantage of self-pollination is that the pollen grains are directly transferred onto the stigma of the flower. You don't need a pollinator. Whereas in cross-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred through insects or wind or water or animals, and so a pollinator is going to be required. An advantage of cross-pollination is that it occurs between flowers which are genetically different. This outbreeding helps maintain the gene pool. In comparison with self-pollination, because it occurs in flowers which are genetically identical, you get inbreeding occurring, which reduces the size of the gene pool.